if wanting marriage and being mindful and simply caring about what men find attractive makes you a pick me, then I'm the biggest pick me in the game. Lock me up, send me to pick me prison. Everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am Jen and this is Fundy Fridays and here on my channel I talk about different aspects of Christian fundamentalism, American conservative politics, pop culture, and gay stuff. And today is a very special, a very classic update episode and we are going to be talking about two prominent trad wives and what they've been up to. If you aren't aware and if you actually aren't aware I would be shocked. I made two videos, one about Mrs. Midwest and one about Classically Abbey. The Classically Abbey one's probably two years old now. 20, I made it in 2021. Yeah. And Mrs. Midwest I made pretty sure also in the summer of 21. So they're both several years old. And since then, both of them have had two children. So it's like they've been busy. But the... Classically Abby video is actually the video that put my channel on the map. You would think that it would be the Duggars, but it actually wasn't. I made a video about Classically Abby because she, she was all over YouTube at the time because she had actually made one of her videos an advertisement and paid to have it advertised everywhere. Social media, celebrities, influencers, and YouTubers. So much of the time it feels like one worldview, one position is tolerated. Many of them don't say outright what their politics are. Many of them do. None of them need to, and none of them will say what I'm about to. I'm a conservative influencer. Being a conservative woman in today's day and age is not easy. You'll be told that you have internalized misogyny. You'll be told that you don't care about other women's well-being. You'll be told that you aren't a real woman, but none of that is true. Conservative women are the backbone of American society. Well, Abby's right about one thing. Women do make up the backbone of conservative politics, at least. And we all know that 50% of white women voted for Trump in 2016. But besides that, white women have always been pivotal to the advancement of far-right nationalist groups. They provide the food, childcare, and even so the uniforms of America's most shameful domestic hate groups. We stand hand in hand with men, not against them. And we shouldn't have to remain silent about our views, like I did, for years. And she was just kind of this huge phenomenon. And so I made a video about her, and my channel just absolutely exploded. The subscriber count went crazy, and I quit my job at Crumble two weeks later. And... You know, you might think that that's like a really fast choice, but I was, I was ready to, to leave. So I really and truly have Classically Abby to thank for my career for this channel, because otherwise I would have just kept doing it part time. And that's about the only thing that I respect about her. So <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna get into that today. If you don't know who Mrs. Midwest is, she's just a, she's a really prominent trad wife. She has in the past lent her uh, likeness, pictures of her and her husband and her pregnancy to these um, like white supremacist Instagram pages. And she used to, I still think a little bit is involved with um, the red pill community. These women have just been due for an update and I was like, it would be so cool to compare them to each other because they're very similar and not going to talk about it very much because it's not really relevant. But classically, Abby is her maiden name is Shapiro. Her brother is Ben Shapiro. And you can tell that I don't know if they got it from their parents or what, but both of them are very argumentative, very headstrong, very conservative and very much like my opinion is right. You have to listen to me. This is what I think. I also think it's correct. Whereas Mrs. Midwest is like, well, I'm just trying to be a feminine woman. I don't see what's so wrong with that. Your internet history begs to differ, but yeah, it's just, it's just a good idea to update, especially since doing that Pearl episode. And I was like learning so much about red pill and pipelines and stuff that I was like, I, I just need to take this further. I need to talk about Mrs. Midwest because Abby is more for people that already believe that kind of stuff. She's more for like, if you're already a conservative, you'll love her. But Mrs. Midwest sucks you in because she doesn't 
talk overtly about this stuff, but it's in the little things. It's in her little comments. Because my message can be kind of like intense for some people, like the things I believe, I like to pad it with, oh, skincare and like how I clean my house, you know? And she appears to be less judgmental than Abby. She's always like, you don't have to do this. This is just for me. But there's always that latent like heteronormativity and like discouraging of people expressing different gender identities and I had James give a bunch of definitions of like stuff last time and I don't really think it's necessary to go over them especially because some of them have changed like dog whistle still means the same thing virtue signaling still means the same thing but like like we were talking about the word based in that and like now like everybody uses that and like people use it ironically and so it's like the little things aren't important what's important is this stuff like when she collabs with uh like men who don't believe in consent and i i truly wonder if there's a genetic component not not just genetic but a natural component to cleaning i have nothing to lose i don't work i can say what i want and i do think that cleaning and nesting is more feminine. So anyways, I am just all over the place. I'm sorry. We're going to talk about all this stuff in just a second after the break. First of all, if you want to support my channel, we have Patreon and YouTube memberships. Gets you all kinds of good stuff, behind the scenes videos, access to the Discord. And if you're a member on YouTube, you get like your name's a different color in the chat. That's, that's just a special benefit of the YouTube memberships. Um, I have lots of merch. We have a new poster, as you can see there, deconstruction, all kinds of good stuff. And until January 1st, 2024, I have a discount code running right now. It is holiday 15. If you use that at checkout on the bonfire store, you will get 15% off of the items in your cart. So before we begin, um, I got to pay for a new roof. My house is a hundred years old. Uh, so here is a word from our sponsor. So we'd like to take a hot minute and let you all know that today's video is sponsored by Scentbird. You cool cats and dames can go to Scentbird.com right now and use code FFridays to get 55% off of your first month. That's double F Fridays for 55% off your first month. Now let's check in on the newlyweds and see how things are going in marital paradise. Well, bye, honey. Have fun at the asbestos factory. Oh, you know I will, honey. We keep America fireproof. Now come over here and give me a kiss. Say, you smell like a million bucks. Whatever you're doing, you keep it up. What my husband doesn't know is that today's episode is actually sponsored by Scentbird, a subscription service that sends you luxury, high quality parfums in the mail, but without the luxury price. It's actually quite the deal. As a traditional housewife, I love smelling good and feeling feminine. So that's why Scentbird is number one in my heart. And with such cute cases and such a tiny convenient size, you can put them in your backpack, your pocketbook, or even tuck it in your pantyhose and say, this one is so cute, I think we should bring that color back, don't you think? Ah, uh, much better. This one is a Luminare Intensa by Vince Camuto. It's a richly feminine scent, which you know I love, with hints of lemon, midnight orchid, sandalwood, and vanilla. It smells like that classic scent your grandma would wear, but with an updated twist. I'd say it's perfect for a tea party or domestic labor. And then there's this little cutie. It's Berry Beauty by Kenzie. I just love the little hearts, don't you think? This one's got hints of strawberry, peach nectar, apple blossom. <laughs> it's a whole fruit salad, you could say. This one has a much more youthful scent profile and is perfect for ladies night out or bridge club. And just between us fellas, scent bird is for the men too. What my wife doesn't know, won't hurt her. Take this jazzy little number, Florgasm by Heretic. Not sure how they found out about my personal life, but one thing I can tell you is this scent is fabulous. This scent has traces of bergamot, coriander, tuberose, and pink pepper. To me, it smells clean and refreshing in a way that reminds me of a five-star luxury hotel that I could absolutely afford to take the missus to on my single income in the 1950s. So whether you're a traditional woman like me or a Feminist, you too have access to Scentbird's variety of fragrances for one low, low price. So once again, we'd like to thank Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. You all in our lovely audience today can go to Scentbird.com and use code FFridays for 55% off your first month. 
That's Double F Fridays for 55% off your first month. And now, back to the episode. The thing about these two women is that at times they can be very likable. That's probably one of the biggest reasons why people start watching their content and then just it snowballs into whatever because they both do vlogs and talk about fashion and decorating and baking and gardening and all that domestic stuff, right? If you've watched my channel, you know a little bit about me. I like all that stuff. You know, I like the girly aesthetic. I'm not quite sure where I stand on my gender journey, but I really like girly stuff. And I have found myself like enjoying their content when it's not a fucked up conservative dog whistle. Like in the last episode doing research, um, Abby was talking about, um, it's really helpful to get, uh, one of those travel mirrors that has a led light around it. And I use that every time I travel and I, I always think of her and like, Caitlin, that's Mrs. Midwest, like, she likes K-dramas and the little pusheen cat. Like, they both have personalities and they're both human and they're both trying their best, I guess. But, like, they try to act innocent. They try to act like the stuff that they're peddling isn't offensive propaganda. Abby more so than, than Caitlin. Her story really is more about like the stuff that she's not showing you, the stuff that she's trying to hide. It's really just a tale of these women being pulled between these two worlds, this female conservative influencer, girl boss characters, and these like submissive background lives as a traditional wife. I know that I am preaching to the choir. This is just on the off fucking chance this is just on the off chance that either of them are watching this video, which I really doubt. But like, there's nothing wrong with being a stay at home spouse or a stay at home parent. There's nothing wrong with enjoying or doing domestic tasks. There's nothing wrong with baking and, and all that stuff. It's the other things that come with it. It's the, oh, you start off a little, you know, dab one with a little crunchy stuff and then you end up being a anti-vax QAnon person. Like, you just have to be careful with this stuff because they're not going to immediately tell you what their agenda is up front. Unless they're happy, but she's kind of the exception to a lot of rules. If I haven't mentioned it before, Abby is Jewish and I only bring that up to demonstrate that anybody can fall prey to a pipeline, especially one like this. And it doesn't matter your race or your background or your religious affiliation. Anybody can be radicalized given a long enough timeline. You've got to be careful because there's domestic abuse lurking in a lot of these super traditional submissive relationships. There's no equality. There's no queer liberation. There's like, it's a very specific type of lifestyle and you just got to be careful. And I know that you all watching are probably fine, but that's why these things raise such an al alarm for people. It's not because we want to destroy the family or we, we hate traditional women, as Mrs. Midwest tries to say. It's because we're worried that it's going to lead into something else, which oftentimes it does. So Mrs. Midwest, um, Caitlin Huber is her real name. She lives in Michigan with her husband and her two kids. She has a German Shepherd. Oh, I forgot to mention that Mrs. Midwest did go to college. In fact, that's where she met her husband. And the story goes that they fell in love on a school trip to Jerusalem. She grew up in the Dutch Reformed Church and she is an American citizen, but she lived in Canada with her family growing up. And then she moved back down to the States to go to college in Michigan. Then Mrs. Midwest said she worked for six months as like a wedding planning business, like website designer, and she hated it, which, you know, is not surprising. Like Honestly, to me, it's less stressful. I did work for about six months on a nine to five job and it was really difficult, you know, and busy and stressful. And I wasn't able to keep up with my home and I just wanted to be home. She makes traditional lifestyle vlogs. She gives a lot of advice like feminine hairstyles, feminine outfits, 
um, how to be more ladylike, which, you know, includes stuff like the obvious, no burping and blah, blah, blah. But like, carry yourself a certain way, have good posture, always speak in this like sing song voice and you know, all these things. It's very like, you know, to be a woman is to perform. Like, that's what I get from her. And she really popped off um, a couple years ago because she was making these videos and like, they just, they were a lot more judgmental back then. But having chronic messiness is different than having an unkempt day. It's about having a messy purse, a messy car, dirty dishes in the sink constantly, dirty laundry all over the house and just dirt, mess, clutter, everything everywhere. That is not ladylike. Okay, so this clip reminds me of my original video and I made a little like music video thing at the beginning um, using this exact clip. Don't care about your beauty. Destroy your beauty. Beauty is a social construct. That, that is not ladylike. 200 years ago, the, the most, most beautiful, beautiful woman, woman that you would see or have in your mind might have been, been your second, second cousin. cousin. And then that reminded me of this video, the Mrs. Midwest video, is where the um, Limp Biscuit University thing comes from. That's where the obsession with, with Fred Durst comes from. I don't know what book she's reading, but I personally get all of my gender theory from Professor Fred Durst of Limp Biscuit University. So I believe in all of the genders. Hey ladies, hey fellas, and the people that don't give up. And I have since learned my lesson and am not going to play the entire chorus there so I don't get copyright claimed. But anyway, let's check out what Mrs. Midwest is up to now with a video called, Ladies, Wanting a Husband Doesn't Make You a Pick Me. It's intended to be an insult towards women who are desperate for male attention. But now it's overlapping into anyone who even cares a little bit about maybe making themselves more appealing for men. How to attract better quality men. How to attract a man in general if you have no idea what you're doing. And now it's kind of seeming like in order to not be a pick me girl, you have to be someone who openly says you don't care what men think about you. You don't like care about marriage. You don't even want marriage. Um, you're not going to change yourself for a man at all. Now we're feeling ashamed for doing that stuff. Like we're, we're being made to feel embarrassed at this point for just being women, for being interested in marriage, for being interested in what men think about us. You're not a pick me girl for caring about what men find attractive. Wanting marriage and caring about what men think of you doesn't make you a pick me girl. It's, it's misogynistic to say that to women because a woman's goals shouldn't only matter and, and be valued and respected when they're traditionally masculine goals, i.e. a career. First of all, you know good and damn well you're not allowed to say something as misogynist when you're a literal trad wife who has associations with not only the red pill, but some of the internet's worst misogynists and, and racists. So I don't really want to hear that from you. And second of all, your obsession with how to attract men is kind of what led you into the red pill. That's kind of the classic tale of anybody who, who enters those kinds of communities. They want answers to life's questions, you know, answers that can't easily be gotten. And then they get obsessed with what do I have to do to attract? How do I make myself more appealing? And they try to turn it into like a science. And that's exactly what red pill does. They think that the chads are going to take their women and that, you know, if women would stop being such feminist whores, then they would come back to these these men and it's just really disgusting and it shows how how they are the ones that are actually objectifying women more but i wanted to lose about like 10 pounds like just a little bit of that extra fluff and so i started looking online for like like hardcore motivation like you don't look good like lose the weight and that's how i discovered return of kings <laughs> <laughs> I started that's hilarious those blog posts that were like um, women who gained all this weight and it destroyed their looks. And I was like kind of shocked um, because the society tells you like, oh, if you have like pretty face, if you have curves, like you're good looking, end of story. Um, but on Return of Kings, I kind of learned, no, there's like this higher standard that you have to reach to actually be attractive. Watching that clip again after all these years just kind of reminded me of this new clip that I found. And it's 
just hidden plainly in this video where she's talking about feminine hair, which is like already a silly kind of concept. She's like talking about bone structure and things. And that could just be completely innocuous. It totally could. But that is an incel thing. They get obsessed with bone structure and, you know, like I said, the Chad's trying to steal their women. Hair, just like fashion, is not enough to completely make you look masculine. If you are a woman, you have inherent femininity about you. It is how you're created. It is in stuff you might not even really realize, like your bone structure, the softness of even something like your shoulders or your your neck, your jaw, um, the way your eyes are, even your hairline, the texture of your hair, all of that is feminine because you are a woman. I suppose you could also put like maybe a slightly transphobic read to that one too about like there's certain things that you can and can't change about like bone structure. I, it, it's it's giving Jordan Peterson a little bit but anyway I wanted to show you a clip from my last video which is a clip of an old video of hers. We're doing a little clipception here. Culture really celebrates masculine traits when they're seen in women. So when a woman is strong, when she's a career woman, when she's a leader, provider, CEO, all those things, we celebrate those women and we say, oh my gosh, they're so amazing. They're the pinnacle of woman. But the thing is, that pinnacle of woman is displaying extremely, extreme masculinity. And so it kind of feels like in order to be a really good woman, you have to be really masculine. You know, it would be a shame if somebody took that uh, extremely offensive clip where she's saying, that to be a good woman you have to be masculine and maybe made some sort of non-binary art piece. Just saying. Many people simply misunderstand what it means to be traditional and because of that they often offer a lot of criticism. But it's not just internet trolls that will criticize these traditional beliefs. Oftentimes it's people of opposing beliefs. It's people who we're related to like parents or family. It's often our friends. And most assuredly it's the media. Entertainment, literature, fiction. There is a huge push right now to have women perform masculinity. Literally name one time that has ever happened because really what I see day in and day out is women being shamed for doing masculine things and vice versa. And you're going to see this happen a lot in this episode. A lot of these trad wives are going to keep saying such and such is under attack and men are being rewarded for being feminine and I just don't see where that's happening. Likewise, I have a problem when society seeks to only elevate the men who are successful at performing femininity and ignoring the men who are wonderful in their masculinity. I said bitch where? In all seriousness though, like what is she talking about? Where are these feminine men that are being rewarded? Because all I see, once again, is feminine men, masculine women, non-binary people, you name it are all being treated like shit by people like you and they are not being rewarded. And no, RuPaul's Drag Race does not count as a sample size of the average American or the average queer person's life experience. Let me say that saying men are trash is a joke. That you're allowed to say it because it's a harmless joke. But in reality, everything has an impact and it's not harmless to say men are trash. That's not useful because right now, more than ever, men are trying to find their place in this world. They're trying to figure out their masculinity and instead of laughing at them we should encourage our brothers we should encourage them in the pursuit of their self-actualization newsflash caitlin feminists don't hate men and if you think women are the only ones experiencing problems in the west or in the world you have a narrow worldview and i encourage you to truly listen to the life experiences of others men experience the highest suicide rate the highest work mortality rates and the highest incarceration rates men experience issues in society and just because you're not a man and you can't fathom that doesn't mean it doesn't happen and if you did some digging into 
into capitalism, white supremacy, the war on drugs, then maybe you would also understand that we are trying to fight against systems that affect the exact things that you just listed. You only fake care because you want to shit on women. And we believe that the patriarchy affects everyone negatively. This includes toxic masculinity, and toxic masculinity is, does not mean men bad. It means it's a system that actively hurts men, and it actively keeps them from being able to succeed in life because of these restrictions and these gender roles that you are enforcing. When will you see that we actually do care about men, women, and gender non-conforming people so i don't know you can just keep on being unhappy but i don't know what you're talking about it's just frustrating too because it's mostly women using this insult against other women and that's where this whole mindset falls apart because it's all about women supporting women yes girl go do your thing until it's like oh wait no don't do that thing if that's your thing if finding a husband and being a homemaker is your thing I don't kind of support that. So women supporting other women who are just like themselves. Not once have I ever encountered another feminist who was shaming a woman for staying home or getting married or having children. Like most feminists are married with children themselves. I just don't understand this straw woman that she's describing. Like feminists should be supporting all women, including people like Caitlin, but also people that we know she doesn't support herself, like sex workers, incarcerated women, disabled women, trans women. We know that she's not reciprocating, so why should we even give a shit? So many stay-at-home moms have even expressed in the channel comments their frustration at being judged by neighbors, fellow community members, or even their own family at their choices. People tend to bully or shame you for things that stand out, things that are different than the norm. And it's no secret that this lifestyle I'm talking about, the one I'm living out and the one many of you are living out, is very alternative in 2019. It is so uncommon for a young woman to be traditional, let alone religious, in our modern society. This does draw a lot of unwarranted attention to us and our lives, but on the flip side, it feels like we're not allowed to express our beliefs. We're not allowed to form groups around our ideas and our ideologies. You know, it feels like everyone is all about diversity in our progressive society, but they're really not. They're not interested in diverse thought. They're not interested in diverse lifestyles. They're not interested in diversity so as it pertains to religious people or traditional people. Diversity apparently only applies to extremely progressive lifestyles. Why are we being shamed and why is our way of life being threatened? You know, it's like that has always driven me crazy when conservatives talk about their way of life being threatened because uh, first of all, what does somebody else's lifestyle ever have to do with anything that has to do with you and number two you're telling me that a traditional heteronormative man and woman relationship with however many kids doing this conservative stuff you're afraid that that's being threatened that's the most common arrangement that's how it's been forever and will probably continue to be forever like just because more queer people are more like loud about their lives and what makes them happy and about, you know, defending their rights does not threaten you. Like, do they think that they're, they're going to make straight marriage illegal? Like that's not what's happening. The most threatened these people's lifestyles are, are like people making videos about it and like people bitching them out or leaving a shitty comment. That's not threatening your lifestyle. And Mrs. Midwest will be the first one to say, like, don't let people tell you what to think and you got to be stand up for your rights. So like, what, what are you talking about? Remember that you don't have to explain your lifestyle or your career path to anybody. Your grocery store clerk doesn't need to explain to you why she chose to work at a grocery store versus going to med medical school. People don't need to explain that stuff because it's incredibly invasive. If it's someone like your parents, someone who is close to you, maybe they're worried about you, I encourage you to employ the tactics of reminding people of a woman's God-given and Western-given right to choose her life. 
that can sometimes work. But if none of that works, you might be dealing with the third category of people, the bully. Okay, I will address this one actually and not just make a dumb joke. If your friends are shaming you for this new lifestyle, it's probably because they are worried about you. Maybe you're acting differently. Maybe you've got this new air about you. You're, you know, suddenly a Mrs. Midwest clone. Like they're worried because this stuff leads to pipelines very frequently. And no, you shouldn't be a dick to your friends ever. And if somebody you know is going that direction and changing in this troublesome way, you know, try being empathetic and reaching out and saying a kind word and being available to talk to them. But I don't think that's what she's talking about. Also, always protect your mental health first. If you have been trying to like keep a friend from, you know, going down a pipeline and they are being actively toxic and abusive to you, then maybe it's time to let them go. But this is all like a hypothetical person that I just made up. So keep that in mind. She talks a lot about this lady, um, Laura Doyle of the Empowered Wife podcast. And in the other Q&A, she even linked to a book that she wrote um, to, for like a fan. And the description says, the Empowered Wife podcast is all about fixing your relationship without your man's conscious effort, even if it seems completely hopeless. But I will say my biggest advice comes from this book that I've talked about nonstop over the last few months, and it's from the Empowered Wife podcast. They had an, She had an episode titled, um, How to Get Your Husband... Essentially, it was like how to get your husband to let you have another baby, but it's essentially approaching the situation from a positive light and not putting pressure on your husband but more focusing on yourself and basically how happy you would be um to have a baby ladies is it classic to manipulate your man but i've learned in marriage as a wife the way that you can kind of influence your husband i don't want to say manipulate because that's not really what it is but it's um, the way that you can communicate with him this severe desire is by keeping it positive and, ref and just telling him how happy you would be if um, you were able to become a mother. This is what I did. I went to my husband. It was actually on my birthday. And I said, I would be so happy if in a year from now I was pregnant. And... I just kind of left it at that. I was just like, this would make me so happy. I'm totally joking. I don't think this is manipulation, but it just screams like bad communication to me. Like you don't need to walk around and be like, hmm, it'd be so nice if I had a baby, like talk to each other. You might get your feelings hurt. You might have to make big changes in your relationship if you guys have completely, totally different feelings on the subject. But the answer is not to try and get your husband to guess that's what you want or to feel bad or guilty and, and to just give in. Like it should be something that both of you want 100%. Otherwise, it's not going to work. I mean, it's it's honestly, it reminds me of Lori Alexander because she's got like a post about how she sabotaged her birth control so she could have more kids. And like, I just don't understand how this is appropriate behavior. Okay, this next thing is totally irrelevant and stupid and probably not worth your time. But I was watching this vlog and she's like trying to be all aesthetic and feminine and whatnot. And she's painting this picture and she, she goes, I'm neutralizing this painting because I thought it was like tacky. She's literally going to suck the life out of a painting for like a beige aesthetic. How much do you guys want to bet that's a Thomas Kincaid painting? <laughs> so like another famous blonde we've talked about on this channel, Caitlin's husband is a police officer. Just like the other person, he got sued for excessive force. My apologies, it's actually a civil rights lawsuit for a possible unlawful arrest. So Mrs. Midwest's husband, Grant Huber, in early 2020, he had taken part in a motorcycle chase involving two speeding motorcyclists, one of whom escaped and one of whom got pulled over. 
Rather than just doing the reasonable thing of issuing the single ticket and moving on with his day, Huber instead apparently took the escaped suspect's address from the other suspect in order to go arrest him for, once again, speeding. And by that, I mean Huber took three other officers to the guy's house to try and make an arrest. Rightfully, since the suspect realized that Huber had basically no evidence, no warrant, and no real reason for any of this, he attempted to close the door in Huber's face and go on about his day, and so Huber blocked the quote-unquote suspect from closing his door and in some capacity entered the home along with the other officers in order to make a violent arrest. While the officers indicate some initial violence from the suspect, although I personally found their accounts to be dubious and poorly reported, and it wouldn't matter anyway if the quote-unquote suspect suspect was violent because a cab both groups agree that multiple officers used significant physical force to subdue the subject quote-unquote suspect is now currently suing huber and his fellow officers for three transgressions i reviewed a judgment issued from june 2023 and in my incredibly non-attorney opinion it seems like the case is still moving forward with no significant developments as of yet given that this case involved law enforcement i kind of suspect that mr midwest is going to get off no matter what actually happened and i must say that even even Huber's own version of events from the court make him really sound like a hothead who never bothered to get a warrant or do any due diligence on this situation. He agrees that he went to the suspect house with multiple officers over a speeding ticket, that he didn't get a warrant, and that he barred the suspect from closing the door despite having no real reason to do so. No idea how this case is going to turn out, but it definitely doesn't paint the man in a good light either way in my opinion. Caitlin has definitely had a crazy few years, two babies born in the same year, um, her husband was, you know, sued for the unlawful arrest thing, and then he actually got into an accident at work in the police car and ended up in the hospital. The next day, her grandpa died, and then after that, she got mauled by a stray dog. So, like, that's tough no matter who you are. So, um, hope things get better for you. Okay, here's a little mini conclusion before we dive into Classically Abby. If I didn't make it clear enough, I really just would like to say once more that if Caitlin or Mrs. Midwest doesn't feel the same way that she used to, she needs to speak up. If she has changed her beliefs, if she has denounced these beliefs, if she believes something else, she needs to say something because otherwise we are forced to believe that she still thinks that same way. I feel a little guilty sometimes um, going off of her deleted Reddit post because they were deleted after all, but it's not like I can go back into my brain and suck the memories out like Mr. Krabs. Okay, it is what it is. Everybody is aware that she used to dabble in these communities and from her early YouTube videos and even some of the stuff she says now kind of makes me think that she still believes that stuff a little bit. So it is up to her to denounce these beliefs if she does not have them. Otherwise, I'm going to still think that she, you know, is a red-pilled trad wife with problematic associations. Um, but in total, I hope you have a wonderfully blessed and traditional week, my beautiful sisters and feminine family. All right, it's the moment none of you have been waiting for. It's the Classically Abby update. Her name is now Abby Roth, but she was Abby Shapiro. Um, she went to USC and the Manhattan School of Music. She was a professional, semi-professional, I'm not actually sure. I think she likes to embellish her accomplishments, um, but she was an opera singer and she used to make a lot of videos about um, singing different songs. So this is the tale my mother told me That tale that was much too dull to hold me And this is the surge and the rush she said would show her story goes on oh i was young i forgot that things outlive me my goal was the kick that life would give me okay so for context this is a song from a musical called baby which is apparently about three couples that have babies um, it's not an original song. She's not as creative as Morgan, I guess, coming up with her own music, but she used to post all kinds of opera content stuff of her when she was in college, stuff of her doing like, uh, more traditional musicals, like 
she's wild. She clearly loves to sing, um, but she also is very much like she is ashamed of her past life as a girl boss opera singer, as she used to call it. But anyway, this song is awful, at least the way that she's singing it and the way that it's mixed. I also think it's funny that like you can tell she recorded this in just like a regular room with the uh, with the acoustics entirely being an afterthought. So that's why it sounds that way. But anyway, here's the rest of the song that goes on and on and on and on and on. And she calls her fans the classic crew. And so she'll be like, bye, classic crew. And then she'll go, oh. <laughs> if you'd like to follow me on social media, it's Classically Abby absolutely everywhere. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. All I'm going to say is that reminds me a lot of Dennis Reynolds in this famous scene. needs to be in a hospital. When I last covered her, she lived in Nebraska and now she lives in Florida with her husband, her son, and a baby on the way. He is a lawyer for a conservative law firm. And I mean, I'm talking like conservative, like they got a whole case against um, this one mom who's suing the school district for uh, teaching the kids woke agenda. Oh no, it's even worse than that. It was for this woman who has a transgender child and the school socially transitioned to them and so she sued them. And, you know, if you don't know, social transitioning is just pronouns and name. And you know they're twisting it to be this whole, like, grooming situation. Her brother is Ben Shapiro. As far as I know, he's never been on the channel. I don't think there's beef. He's just 10 years older than her, so they probably don't hang out that much. But he might not be on the channel very much, but they do like to bring him out uh, to attract people to this program. It's called... Young America Foundation and it's, you know, future Republicans. They say that we're brainwashing the youth. Abby has given speeches at this thing. Ben Shapiro definitely gets brought out for clout. So, I mean, that's kind of sad if he's the only person that you guys have. Um, and then they have Ted Cruz. One tiny little quote. Newt Gingrich. And her whole thing is determining what is and isn't classic, or at least it used to be. You know how when you say a word so many times, it doesn't sound like a word anymore? That's what happened when I edited this video. How I went from being just a normal girl to classic Abby, classically Abby. Classic, classic, classical concert, classic. Being classic, classic, classic woman, classic. When you're surrounded by people who are skeptical of being more classic. You classic, 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 classic. Number three is don't do drugs. Classic, classic is classic lifestyle. Classic, 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 classic girl summer. Last time I talked about her, I had a scrolling list of things that she found to be classic and not classic. Being a wife, flattering clothes with feminine details, classic art, smelling nice, getting a haircut, Audrey Hepburn, wall art, red nails on Valentine's Day, twinkly lights, fake plants and candles, Kate Middleton, having strong values, pearls, breast health, Nikki Haley, having a signature scent, decorating your home, Margaret Thatcher, color palettes, reading, especially reading in a coffee shop, knitting, being a good hostess, plastic surgery, if you've had a baby, cooking, having a good relationship with your mother, gardening, singing, jewelry making, carrying around a fancy glass when you drink, going to Disney World during a pandemic, Shakespeare. Wearing a watch that is not digital. A Fitbit is okay. Taylor Swift before she became an SJW. Being good with children. Drinking with your husband. And butter dishes. And I think having a butter dish is just so classic. My apologies, that audio is just, it's, it's ass. I'm sorry, I have no excuses. I wasn't using a microphone back then. I was literally just using the webcam audio. Damn, how far we've all come in two years. You know what else I, I've been thinking about watching this clip is how many of those plants that are in the background are now dead. I have like 
<laughs> maybe one or two that has survived from my negligence. They're doing better now. I have since matured in that aspect. She doesn't really do that that much. Now she just kind of shares her opinion and talks about what she likes and dislikes. Like, for example, she's really into fine-tipped pens and Warhammer. And no, I'm not joking, bitch. We started doing something new, which is the Warhammer RPG, Warhammer Fantasy RPG. So Jacob is a big fan of Warhammer. She really likes D&D &D and Warhammer and other tabletop games. Um, she probably learned it from her husband, but like she's into them. This isn't some sort of like pretending to like something to get her husband to like her. Like she's the fucking dungeon master. And she was reading um, like the game manuals for fun on a vlog. And we've done Dungeons and Dragons. We've done another one called Blades in the Dark. I, that's my personal favorite. Personally, I like Blades in the Dark the best. But we, uh, he really wants to do this Warhammer one. So I'm currently reading it uh, so that I can learn how to be the Dungeon Master. It's really the Game Master for Warhammer. But if you play Dungeons and Dragons, it's called the Dungeon Master. Basically what that means is that you're the person who runs the game, which I love doing because I love getting to be all the characters. I love the creativity of it, which is really cool. But it's another system to learn it's more characters to learn so that's what i'm doing right now and then we're gonna do a little bit more of that today all jokes aside abby's definition of classic includes several things like always striving to improve yourself and living traditionally i know what you mean by that abby you're not slick. Classic means being the best version of yourself, holding to traditional values, and presenting yourself in the best way possible. This attitude that she has extends to other areas of life, um, like in this clip where she says, hey, listen, I know I've been like shaming and judging all you single women and women without children, but as long as you agree with me at the end of the day, you're okay in my book. And I really wanna to talk to you guys just about how you can still be classic, you can still be worthy, you can still have value. These are all true statements and just how that fits into the classic traditional perspective. Because I make this content, which is geared toward convincing those women who yet don't know that this is so important, it could make somebody who is not in that stage of life feel like they don't have value or their life at this point isn't worthy. And what I really want to clarify is that if you know that these things are important, if you agree that a traditional stable marriage and life and family is the building block of society and civilization, if you know that these are important things and you're just not there yet, you just haven't met the right guy, you may be struggling with infertility, whatever it is, you have value. You are worthy. If you have the right intentions and you're just not there yet or your path has gone in a different direction, but you know the importance of these things, then that's what matters. That's the important thing. So Abby does occasionally still talk about things that are and aren't classic, but her main thing that she does on her channel now is like a good three-way split between stay-at-home mommy hacks, conservative rage bait, and judgmental diatribes about how everybody on earth should have children. It is the most fulfilling lifestyle you can ever have. If you don't have children, you're selfish and hedonistic and how she is absolutely 100% right and you need to listen to her opinion. Number one, let's get out of the way. I believe that having children is the best and most important way to find fulfillment, find meaning, have purpose. I think everyone should have children, okay? This is what I think. I also think it's correct, but that's what I think. And yes, it does get worse. I didn't think it was possible, but now that she's a mother, she has gotten even more sanctimonious and up her own ass about this insane opinion, by the way. You could take on this massive burden and you could take on the massive responsibility of another person's life, or you could just continue to live for yourself and travel and party it up and do all of these things that I think are not what life is for, are not what life is truly about, then you will say that, well, maybe you shouldn't be a parent. Maybe you shouldn't be a mother. I believe, though, that motherhood is what life is for. 
Are you ready? Because I don't think you're ready for what she is about to say. You can't learn if you call motherhood a choice. And this is why I'm saying I don't like the idea that motherhood is a choice in the sense that motherhood is part of life. It's not something you could choose to do or not to do. It is a part and parcel of being a person, of being a woman. That is what I mean when I say motherhood isn't a choice. I don't have a rebuttal for this, like an argument back because she's just plain wrong. Like, I've never understood this argument. This is not, it's not a choice. What do you mean? What do you mean it's not a choice? We have free will. I don't understand this. Like, this is some pearl level logic here. Like, I don't think it should be a choice. Well, it's not up to you. You can't make people have children if they don't want to. And that would also be like, you know, bad for the children and the person. Like, not even the most hardcore fundamentalist have I ever heard speak like this. Like, not even Girl Defined is out here saying like, you have to do this. You have to. This is going to happen to you. I do not understand. This has just flabbergasted me to the point of, like, I feel like I just got set to the astral realm. Like, what is this? I don't understand. But what do you expect from Abby, who also believes that birth control is immoral because it causes abortions, which it does not. And that has never made sense to me because you can get pregnant while you're on birth control, first of all. And second of all, if it caused abortions, don't you think it'd be uh, highly sought out after <laughs> Roe versus Wade got overturned? Don't you think that would be one of the things that they uh, advertise? All the pill does is prevent you from ovulating. That's not the same thing as aborting a already fertilized embryo. Are you kidding me? Do you not know anything about how anything works? Ooh, this is a this is an interesting one. Do you think birth control is moral? I put out a video a long time ago saying like it doesn't it doesn't work for me. If it works for you, that's fine, but it doesn't work for me. That was before I learned that that being on the pill can cause early abortions. It's like a fail safe built into the pill is that if a, an egg does get fertilized, it prevents it from attaching on the uterine wall. Abby, you're gonna have to inform me on what this miracle birth control drug is that both allows you to get pregnant and then also causes an abortion. So I didn't know that for a long time. I just thought that the birth control pill was fine. It wasn't plan B. It wasn't like the um, copper IUD, which does the same thing. It just prevents an egg from implanting onto the wall, a fertilized egg. But the pill in very fine writing. <laughs> Yo, that shit must be in such tiny writing that it's invisible because it's not fucking there. If you understand how it works, can cause the abortion of a fertilized egg. I'm, I, I got a few videos to talk about with her. First and foremost, this one called Ladies, Sex Before Marriage is Ruining Your Life. Cheap sex is not female empowerment. So for my Classically Abbey book club over on my Substack, we recently read a book called Cheap Sex by Mark Regnerus, who's a sociologist. And it was really eye-opening. I highly recommend picking it up if you are interested in reading it because it is fantastic. Also, Mark Regnerus, the sociologist she's referring to has a long history of working with conservative connected issues and was famous for authoring a now debunked study claiming that the children of homosexual couples face poorer outcomes than those with heterosexual parents so we have an understanding of relationships that's pretty self-absorbed and me 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 based Couples are together because of love or because of sexual fulfillment, but they're not together because of tradition or duty. Are things okay at home? And because relationships are really seen as a way for you to find yourself, they're very short-lived. But marriages and relationships are based on commitments. They're based on traditions and duties to one another and to your children. And it's not just about what am I getting today? Am I happy today? Do I feel fulfilled today by you? These Trad wives, they make marriage sound like hell on earth. What do you mean marriage is about duty and obligation and not about love? What are you getting at? Getting married has become less and less easy to do. Men can have access to sex with absolutely no problem. Men don't have to wait to have sex 
with someone because women don't feel like the sex that they are having needs to be with someone who will support them, raise children with them, or marry them. So sex is economically cheap. Men are able to have sex incredibly easily or access pornography on the internet, and they don't need to wait to have sex, and in doing so, better themselves, have a good career in place so they can support a family. Men are really let off the hook and women are the ones who are paying the price. What a really shitty view of men to think of them as these like sex crazed demons that have to get married um, in order to satiate their, their urges. Like what? Women want to be married. This isn't a question of whether or not women want to be married. Women want to be married. And when we have economically cheapened sex so that it's just available at any time to anyone, it makes it so that it is a lot harder to get married because now it's not just, oh, men are going to get married to have sex and have a family. Men now have to come to a conclusion that the relationship they are in is pure enough for it to lead to marriage. Now, the really sad thing is number four. The women who want to wait till marriage are now in a competition with the women who don't. And why don't the men who are waiting for marriage and the women who are waiting for marriage get together? And, and, and why don't they, why don't they date? Cause they already do. And she's making this up. Okay. When you separate sex from conception, the problem is, is that in people's minds, it's an unnatural result of sex to get pregnant which is exactly the opposite of the truth, right? We know that sex and pregnancy are absolutely linked, but birth control gives you the perception that the worst outcome of sex, the most unnatural outcome of sex is pregnancy. And when that's the case, not only do people feel like pregnancy is now a choice, that choice can lead to abortions. Chat, is this real? So I talk a lot about how being a stay-at-home mom is a full-time job and it is the most important job and that there is nothing more important that any woman could do. And I, I do believe that in my heart, but I was raised in the shadow of feminism as pretty much all of you were, I'm guessing all of the people who are watching this video. And so no matter what I know to be true in my heart, I struggle with feeling like I'm not fulfilling my potential or like I'm not doing something important enough for people to like give me credit for. I think that there's kind of this feeling of like, am I doing something worthy? So you're unfulfilled because you had feminist brainwashing 20 years ago or something you lived under the shadow of feminism what i thought you were like a confident traditional woman and you weren't gonna let any criticism get to you or is it more likely that you're unhappy and unfulfilled because you built up motherhood to be like this idol that we should all aspire to. And if we're not, we're like selfish bastards and you're, you know, this perfect homemaker and you're actually projecting. Do you think, do you think that's more likely? You're the one who is judging people and saying that they have to be a certain way or they're bad. And now you're like, well, I feel unfulfilled because of feminists. How, how does them living their life have anything to do with you. So in this next video, I wanted to give you a little heads up because it is so like gut-wrenchingly infuriating and offensive. It's Classically Abby talking about her opinions about Dylan Mulvaney. I'll give you one guess as to what those opinions are. Um, and she is going to misgender Dylan a million times and she does it on purpose. Her and her brother both do that shit. And so just a heads up that this video might be hard to watch. Now, Dylan Mulvaney, who is a TikTok star at this point, has been showing his transition from not man to woman, but from man to girl. Okay, let's quickly address that. Um, that's upsetting that we are not having men transition to being full-blown women. Now, that in and of itself is insane, but now we have men transitioning to youth. Classic girl summer, which is 
scary from a pedophilic perspective. What in the actual fuck? Comparing Dylan to a pedophile for trying to embrace girlhood? I am fucking flabbergasted. This is the type of shit that gets people hate crimed. I cannot believe that she goes on the internet and says the shit. That we are allowing men to call themselves girls and then allowing those people to then hang out with children? Is that the next step? Is that the next logical step? And so Dylan Mulvaney is a trans girl and uh, he prances around in this appropriation of femininity, which is really offensive um, and acts as though he knows what being a woman is, what being a girl is rather, um, by showing really stereotypical versions of femininity on his TikTok. Isn't the premise of your whole channel about like propping up stereotypical traditional gender roles? So when somebody else does it, it's wrong? Men cannot be mothers. And it's disgusting that people even entertain that idea. Women are uniquely fit for that role. It is our God-given right, biological right. It is what we are made for. Yes, there are women who struggle with infertility, but the fact that they even struggle with that infertility is part of womanhood. You're the one that's saying that women are only like good for having babies. You're the one that's reducing women down to their genitals, so I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. If you consider it controversial that women are women and men are men and that men cannot become women just because they take hormonal treatment or say that they want to be girls or put on dresses, then yeah, my channel is political. If that to you is controversial. Yeah, I'm so sorry that happened to you, Dylan. Abby is a horrible, horrible person and you don't deserve to be misgendered or disrespected and not only less popular than you, but a lot, a lot unhappier too. I can say that. In conclusion, nobody here on this channel and certainly not most feminists that I can think of think that feminine energy or girly things are bad. Despite what Mrs. Midwest and Classically Abby will have you, femininity is not under attack. The uh, straight marriage is not going to become illegal and nobody's way of life is actively being threatened. None of us believe that it's wrong to be a stay-at-home person or think that you're wasting your potential or any of that. We value your lives and we don't hate men. This is all projection. This is shit that you're worried about. Like, in fact, we believe that domestic labor is labor and you all deserve to be compensated, respected, and valued. The problem comes in your associations with problematic individuals, with movements that lend their voice to racism and misogyny. We're worried about the pipeline that your audience is being jettisoned through. Depending on who you're talking about, Mrs. Midwest or Classically Abby, you know, is where they're gonna end up. If you all would stop judging people for not conforming to gender roles, this wouldn't even be a problem. To say or to imply that, well, I thought feminists cared about all women. Why don't they care about homemakers? When did we ever say we didn't? I don't know where these claims are coming from. And if it's like just somebody left a shitty comment, that's a shitty comment. That does not reflect what like society thinks. It's not evil feminists that are making you feel inferior. It is your own fault. This is a sparkly pink cage of your own making. You all act like feminism is boiled down to such simple things like, should women work or should they stay at home? Like that's not what the fuck it's about. We're trying to uplift people in poverty and in abusive situations and who are, don't make me do the list again, incarcerated, disabled, sex workers, trans, like there's all kinds of women that you are actively not supporting. So I really don't want to hear your stupid little fucking arguments about, well, why don't you support me? We do. And I know it might be coming across as if Mrs. Midwest is not as bad as Classically Abby, but they're just bad in their own different ways. 
Like I said at the top of this thing, Mrs. Midwest is the beginning of the pipeline and Abby is where you end up. Actually, probably Laurie Alexander is like even further than that. But, you know, you got to age into that role. But with their like pretty privilege and their aesthetically pleasing vlogs and their promises of a future where you get along with your husband and you have all these beautiful babies and you, you know, are just this happy feminine person. Like that's just... It's just dressing for a very problematic cake. Abby, on the other hand, I mean, I'll say shit. You know, I'm glad she's overt with it, but like, it's still very irritating and very problematic and is going to get people hurt someday. And just watching that video of her misgendering Dylan Mulvaney over and over, it just made me so fucking mad. I could barely watch the stuff, but that's her MO. She's, you know, she may come in with the, with the beauty tips and the, and the tabletop games, but like who she is as a person is rotten to the core. And now that she's a mother, her judgmental attitude has just skyrocketed to a point that I didn't even think was possible. And as for Mrs. Midwest, I will repeat my points again. If you don't still believe in that red pill ideology and you don't still associate with those white supremacist Instagram accounts horrible, horrible misogynist men who don't believe in consent, then you need to say something because that's the reputation that you have right now. She's dangerous because she's so, you know, likable. Like, if you didn't have the background that I do, if you didn't know about this kind of stuff, like, it'd be very easy to get sucked into enjoying her content and looking into these things that she's talking about. And, you know, when she's like, stand up for what you believe in and don't listen to the haters. That sounds great to most people, but her haters are well-deserved. Like, there's a reason why your friends are are concerned with your behavior when you start acting like a trad wife, you know? Well, I sure hope you all enjoyed today's episode. I hope you liked the ad too. We worked hard on it. Yeah, I hope this was thorough. I felt like I didn't have enough um, clips or information. That's part of me being self-conscious there, but it's crazy how much my life has changed in two years since making these videos and how much their lives have changed but remained the same and I don't know about you all but I am tired and I can't wait to get off of here and take a break before I have to start editing remember to consensually smash that like and subscribe button follow me on social media check out the info box below um, especially check out my link tree which has um, links to podcasts I've been on articles I've been featured in um, fun stuff like that. We'd like to thank Scentbird for sponsoring this video and remind everybody to go use code F Fridays for 55% off their first month of Scentbird. Love you guys. You keep me young and um, I'll see you soon. Bye!